The other day, as I was walking into the grocery store, I happened upon a delightful conversation. A toddler was walking hand in hand with his father, trying to figure out the difference between the word you and me. He pointed to himself and said, you? And his dad gently said, no, and lovingly redirected his son's pointed finger. And then the boy said, you, again, this time pointed at his father. And with single-minded concentration, he turned his hand, pointed to himself and said, me. He looked to his father for approval and smiled when his dad congratulated him. And then he repeated his newfound knowledge. You and me. It's such a simple distinction, you and me. And yet so profound when you think that all has been made of it. In childhood, it may begin with the most heartfelt and innocent of realizations that someone other than yourself is important to you. I love you, a child repeats to their mother and father. What does a child mean by this? It's hard to say, but it certainly means that you are unique and special to me in a way that no one else is. I often think that in family and extended family contexts, the phrase, I like you, says even more. In these contexts where people often say they love their family members, to hear that they actually like you can be surprisingly meaningful. To be seen and appreciated is one of the fruits of recognizing the difference between you and me. In you and me, there's an acknowledged distinction. I am not you, and you are not me. This can be understood in many ways. Some cultures are more individualistic, and so the concept of you and me may first speak to our separateness. Other cultures are more sociocentric, and so you and me may first speak of togetherness. When you think of you and me, what do you think of first? Togetherness or separateness? In today's gospel, we're told Jesus returns to his native place surrounded by his family. He's been away. They have heard amazing things about him in his absence. Now he has returned as a teacher. The potential is there to embrace either togetherness or separateness, to celebrate who Jesus has become and take joy that a member of their community, a member of their family, has blossomed into something extraordinary, or to pull away in skepticism, perhaps jealousy, and to tear down. Togetherness or separateness is a choice. St. Paul loves the image of the church as the body of Christ, that we all have something unique that we contribute to the whole. Instead of being jealous of the gifts that the Spirit has given, we celebrate those gifts and lift them up for the good of the community. The Gospel says, Jesus was not able to do any mighty deeds there due to their disbelief. They chose separateness. Now imagine what might have happened had they chosen togetherness. Imagine all the good not only Jesus would have done, but others would have done through his teaching and example. And this question isn't limited to the past but it's applicable today. What if we as a church chose togetherness instead of separateness? What if we celebrated and lifted up 
all the gifts of the Spirit that God gives you and me.